Hey guys, I'm Jody. And I'm Justin. And today we are excited to bring you Hadrian's Wall, published by Renegade Game Studios and Garfield Games. This is a one to six player that, uh, game that plays in around 60 minutes. So in this game, you are trying to build a long wall called Hadrian's Wall that is going to help defend the Roman Empire from the uh, pigs who have been invading. And you are going to be crossing out things. Um, you, you each, each player gets two sheets. You're going to be crossing out a lot of stuff. You're going to be getting resources and workers and paying those resources and workers to build things. Uh, lot, lots of fun stuff going on here. So, yeah. Yep. So, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this game. And then we're going to come right back and tell you guys what we thought about it. is played over six years and setup for this game is pretty easy you just put out the components each player takes one of each sheet and a little board that they put together here uh, 12 cards of their color and they are going to shuffle and put them in this area and then you have this fake card that's ready, ready to be uh, in the play area and it's important to know that this game comes with plenty of sheets and that's just one that's just that one and then you have this one as well for that one so there's Plenty to play. So to start each year, you will flip over a fate card and everyone will gather these uh, supplies. So these workers, we got three of these guys, one and one, and one of these. And then every player is also going to grab their top two cards on their own personal deck. And they're going to choose one to become a path card, which will go underneath your board. So it's going to be end of the game objectives and um, a prospect card that you will place over here. And you will also take whatever resources are shown in the uh, lower left-hand corner of the prospect card that you place. So you would also get another blue worker and a resource. Then you could possibly gain additional items depending on what you have built on your player sheet. So for instance, you've got this resource production track right here and you will get resources depending on how many circles you have filled in. So this person would get three of these. Then you could also get yellow workers, blue workers, and move up on some tracks depending on if you've built these or not. So like I mentioned earlier, these path cards are going to be into the game objective. So you always get to kind of choose which one you want to put out of the two. So for instance, this one is going to be completed citizen tracks and you'll get victory points depending on how many of those you complete. So there's going to be different ones for all six years. So since we're doing an overview of this game, we're not going to be going over every single rule in this game. So to overview these sheets, let's start with just the general concept. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be turning in some of your workers and resources to uh, pay the cost to fill in some of your, your squares. Now, you're going to be starting on the left of the track and going to the right for most everything, I believe, and especially down here as well. So if you look down here, this is more of, of your scoring uh, at the end of the game over here. This is where you're going to keep track of disdain. And these tracks, the renown, discipline, all these tracks here, you're going to be crossing out, filling in throughout the game. And these are important because this is where you're going to be getting lots of points at the end of the game, depending on how much you fill these tracks in. And it's important to note that whenever you fill in a, a box that has a symbol, so like another worker or a symbol for one of these tracks down here, basically you're going to get that benefit immediately whenever you fill it in. So let's say uh, this uh, let's say this was filled in, um, then this player would immediately get a yellow worker to use. And that's generally how a lot of these places work, where you fill it in and you can, you can get other stuff as well. Now, this section up here is, is mainly for your defense. So it starts up here with your cohorts. And you're going to, once again, fill, from the, fill in from the left to the right. And you have a left side, center, and right. And this is where 
uh, you're trying to defend because you're going to have picks uh, at the end of the year that are going to be invading on different sides and you don't exactly know where they're going to come from so like if I, if we had to draw two then there would come one from the right and one from the left so you kind of have to you know your best guess of where they might go and you want to make sure you're well defended um, and then you also have this layer of defense here your fort wall sippy wall guard and mining and forestry so if you look on these banners this shows you the cost of everything here you can turn in a blue or black dude turn in a resource resource uh, sword or black worker purple worker and you're just gonna be filling in these boxes now let's take a look at the fort here because in order to build the wall in the sippy you have to build the underlying uh, brick of the fort so for instance, you can see all these chain links. Um, so in order for me to build this part of the wall or this part of the sippy, I would have to turn in one of these guys to fill in this wall or this part of the fort down here. And now I can fill in this or this by turning in the resources. So it's important to make sure you have this base filled in so you can keep filling in stuff on top. And everyone starts with this small granary, so you can use this section. And if you kind of see this line uh, down here, and this put basically three sections: the left, the center, and the right. In order to move on into the center to start building stuff in here, you have to build this medium granary first. Once you do that, then you can build here. And same goes for over here. In order to move in this section, you have to build this large granary, and then you can start building over here. There are also going to be lots of banners in this game, and this is an example. So this fort, underneath the fort, you got these banners down here. So uh, in order, so like I'll fill in this and then this here. So now I have gone all the way up to banner two. Now, for example, in order for me to build this small hotel down here, the cost it shows in the left side here. So I have to turn in these two workers and this resource, and I have to have achieved the level two banner, which we have right here. So then I could fulfill that. So whenever you fill in, let's say we turn in um, a black worker and fill in this, that's the symbol for the cohort. So now I can choose to fill in a track on the co cohort. So every time you see that symbol, that's what that means. Whenever you fill in a box with this hammer icon, you get to fill in the next circle on their resource production. That's going to let you get more resources at the beginning of each year. The training grounds, you can turn in a blue worker to uh, use the symbol, symbol, and several of these areas are going to say max one, one thing per year. So in this case, one training per year. So you're going to actually going to write down what year you're currently in, are in. So we're in year one, and I'm going to cross this out to use that sword symbol. And so this means, and I can now no longer do another one of these in year one. Then you can trade in some workers down here, and this right here is the landmarks, which you will maybe achieve further throughout the game. In order to do this, you have to have achieved uh, of a certain attribute, the 15 level, to achieve those. And then you know you can work toward getting more of this production here. And this is the other sheet where this focuses on different buildings and citizen tracks, some of which are traders and performers. And you got all the way down here, you got the patricians down here. So all of these citizens on the left side are going to have tracks and you're going to start from the left and move to the right. And like I mentioned earlier, there's going to be banners and these are important as well. So um, if I had filled in all the way up to level three banner, then that's going to unlock some um, other things because the blue ones mean that you're going to unlock a, unlock a large larger thing you can do on the side. However, the tan banners are still going to be be important as well. And the cost to fill in these boxes is shown right above the track. So for instance, if I filled in a box with this symbol, then I could fill in one of these. Or if I turned in a yellow worker, then I could fill in one of these as well. And whenever you fill in a box that has something like another worker or resource, then you get that as well. So a few of the things you can do with the blue area is, of course, depending on the, the level banner you have achieved, you turn in some workers for this and you can cross out this and get all of these things listed here. And then you have the market. Now it's important to note that there are several locations or several buildings on these tracks, uh, on this sheet I should say, where you have to build the area before you can take the action of the area. So for instance, the market, 
I would have to have achieved a level four banner, turn in these guys to resources, and then I would cross this box out, which would give me one renown. But now, if I did that, now this has been built, so now I can work in this market area. So basically the market is a place where you can put in a number for the scroll, which is on your path card, or you can use a neighbor's path card, and you're gonna be trying to have them uh, be unequal so you can get more renown um, with the more unequal numbers you have. And of course, you have the cost of on the left side of the banner and a resource. All right, so moving down to the pink, you have this theater where you can, well, of course you have to build this first, but you can do this one performance per year where you basically just get, you turn in this stuff and you get this stuff over here. Then you have the gladiators. This is a little bit different. Depending on what level of banner you are at, you can turn in these resources and uh, circle gladiators, which are going to possibly help you get uh, piety or renown. And you can send your gladiators to battle. And what you're going to do is you're going to flip over the top card of uh, the fate card deck, and you're going to see this right here. This shows what you have to battle against, so two. So then you would choose uh, the gladiator that you were uh, battling with and you would fill in those circles. Now, if you filled in the last one, then this gladiator is dead for the rest of the game. But whenever you uh, the gladiator dies, you can potentially get what's underneath. But if you keep filling in these circles and you move down here and you battle and you still have open circles, then you can get this renown down here. So this area of the sheet is a way for you to collect other things as well. So you turn in some, turn in resources and meet the criteria, and then you can cross off this stuff and fill in all of these respective tracks with all with one box. And down here is a way to also get more uh, filling in for piety in, in particular. And this symbol right here is actually favor. So once you've paid this cost here, filled in this box, filled in this box here, uh, you have you circle this, and this is a one-time use for to help you. Uh, defend against picks. Um, so if you have one pick that goes through your defense, you can use this to help defend one time. And if you go here, this is a way to fill in your disdain to help prevent negative points at the end of the game. So whenever you get to fill in disdain, you are going to actually fill in these circles, depending on how many you are allowed to, and this is going to help prevent negative points at the end of the game. This is a way to get other kinds of workers. And then moving down here, uh, this is where you're gonna be getting a lot more valor and also working on this grid over here. In addition to getting a lot of valor, you can also, if you achieve these, so I did this, paid the cost, you get to circle these to favor, so that's gonna help you defend against the picks. But then you have to choose which direction that, um, which side of your cohort that will help you with. You can only have one of each size. So this would help defend the right cohort. And so if you paid the cost here and took this scout action, that's going to let you use this pattern on your path card or a neighboring player's path card and fill in on this grid here. So, and you can rotate this shape. So for instance, I would use that so I could fill in this, this, oh, this is not a good filling in job. <laughs> This, this, and of course, whatever you fill in. So I filled in a purple worker and a resource, and you would get those and add them to your play, player board. And once you have completed a row on this grid, you will actually be able to move up on the Valor track by one. After everyone has finished taking their actions for the year, then at the end of the year, you are going to have to defend against the picks. And you are going to determine this depending on which level of difficulty everyone has chosen to play. So let's say everyone decided to play this game on easy mode, which would be the green flag. So we are on year one. So we are going to pick one green, uh, I'm sorry, one fake card. We're going to flip it over and that's going to determine where the pick is coming from. So this pick is going to be coming, invading from the left side. Then we're going to look, everyone's going to look at their cohorts and see if this pick was defended or went through. So as we see here on the left side, our left cohort, we have one defense. So that's going to defend this one pick. And every time you are successful in um, defending, 
your empire. Then in this gray banner, you get to take that number of valor, which you're gonna fill in on your track. Now let's say instead this card was chosen, um, so the, the uh, picks are coming in from the right side. We don't have any defense over there, so this pick is gonna go through. Now whenever that happens, you are actually going to not gain valor, but instead you are going to fill in another disdain. And it's important to note that as you go into further years, your um, amounts for cards that you're going to be flipping over are going to increase and the amount of disdain and or valor that you might be getting will increase as well. So once you're done with the sixth year, then everyone's going to tally up their points. You're just going to figure out where you are on the tracks um, and put that amounts there, add up your path cards, which were those uh, objective cards, and then subtract the amount of points for disdain and that will be your total score. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay, so I love this game. It is awesome, and I'm really excited because Justin didn't shoot this one down. <laughs> At first, when he saw it, he was just like, Ugh. no, because there's a lot of busyness going on the sheets, but I, I, I drew him in, and he actually liked it, right? It, I did. I, I tend to like games where you're writing stuff on paper anyway, but this one just was very overwhelming at first. But yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Woohoo! Yes, and so, um, okay, so I, you know, the nerdy factor, I just love tracks. So, you know, you got your citizen tracks on here, you got your fort track, your different, like, renowned discipline tracks that you're trying to move up on. I mean, I just really like that stuff. <laughs> um, but What's the coolest part about this game, I think probably for both of us, is the, the chain effect where for sure. Where you you know, you cross you fill in this one box which gives you this resource, which then lets you go over here and fill in this box, which could give you another resource or a worker, which so you keep going. So like you start the round or the season round year, whatever, with a certain amount of workers and resources, but you keep getting more as you go, which keeps you keeps you going. It's a lot of fun. This, the chaining effect is pretty cool. I agree. I agree. That's that's it's a ton of fun being able to have a certain amount that you start with, but then you know you're kind of exchanging and and getting other stuff as you're turning other things in, and then you're writing stuff down that's allowing you to get other stuff too. It's really really interesting and fun the way that they did it. Or mo keep moving up on the tracks. <laughs> or keep moving up, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. So, I mean, it, it's fun. You got the citizen tracks, which I really like too, but on the parts that are associated with the different citizen tracks, like the different things you can do, like the market, scouting, you know, the different buildings, it's, I feel like I've tried some different methods. And I feel like on some of them, you need to like pick one or the other. Um, Cause I feel like, I don't know, like last game I played, I think I did the gladiator and some, I was trying to try and try a different combos. I, tr I was trying to do work on the gladiators and the temples. I don't know, just sometimes, some of them don't seem to go well together. Uh, just felt like you were stretched a little thin. Yeah, on. yeah, so I feel like you you, need, you definitely need to probably pick and choose a few things you want to work on. That's kind of um, that's kind of what I did. I, I really enjoyed the the scouting for me was was kind of up my it. alley. I knew you were going to like the scouting because the, of the... <laughs> the kind of a polyomino kind of an idea. <laughs> But, you know, that's kind of what I was drawn to. But then every now and then I would jump to one of the other things. But it was only for like one or two moves. So it wasn't something that I was really focused on. I was focused on the scouting. And then I was kind of touching on a couple of the other things. But then I was mostly working on, you know, the resource building stuff over here. So Yeah, you definitely like to uh, build up your wall, your fort, and your... Defense. Yes, so strong, strong defense for sure, and you know I, I almost max out the cohorts of, of of defense on on every all the games that we've played so far, um, and it's been uh, for me kind of an idea of can I get zero of the disdain? Is it possible? Is it possible? And you know, but uh, so it's been it's been a lot of fun um, for me to do those things and. Of course, I really like the idea that we can kind of cater this game to a difficulty level that we want to play at. You know, if you want to make it really, really easy, then you can put it at the green level and, and you're not getting attacked nearly as much. 
Or if you want to make it super hard, which we are, we have yet to go super hard route just yet, but we, um, we, we've done mostly the medium, but if you want to go super hard and get all these attacks coming at you, you can go, you can go that route too. So yeah, before we do that, I need to work on building up my cohort and defenses because <laughs> I typically see, I, I like just moving up on tons of tracks. So like I, I'm, I'm over here busy on the citizen tracks, you know, having fun over there that I forget to, you know, defend. <laughs> uh, so I tend to get a lot more disdain uh, and then I find myself having to try to go to the baths to fill in the disdain so I don't get negative points at the end of the game. But, yeah, you know, I, I we all enjoy different, different parts of the game. Yeah. But, so, guys, I played this game solo, actually. So, this is the second game I've ever played in my entire life. I played uh, so the solo mode. The first one was, I think, Dune Imperium. Mm -hmm. This is the second game I've ever played the solo mode. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely, I mean, you're but, pretty, pretty much doing the exact same thing. You yeah. just have put on a couple cards where, you know, that, for that player interaction. But um, I, I really enjoyed the solo play as well. I mean, I just have fun filling in my boxes and moving up the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I, 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 if I had to pick one area, I know like you like scouting. I like the scouting. I tend to like going to the market. Um, I don't know why I like uh, you know trying to get those different numbers of scrolls and getting renown, moving up the renown track. I tend to go more for that. I really like that. So, um, yeah. So overall, uh, definitely, definitely should check this bad boy out. Mm -hmm. We really like this one a lot. Um, don't don't get kind of you know shied away from all this busyness. You yeah. know, just give it a try. It was overwhelming to look at, but once you got into it and played through the first round or so, you started to figure out where everything was at, and it ended up being okay. It's awesome. Yep. So that is Hadrian's Wall. Uh, we love this. Definitely should check this one out. And until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh. And if you want to help us out, you can click that like button and subscribe to get more of this awesome content here. Yep. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>